in Holland, we love to just play, do it all fair and uh, nice. And over here, it's just more, it's more fighting, much more running. Uh, it's, yeah, really nice. You know what you have with him. And uh, yeah, he will say straight how he thinks about you or what he thinks is the best for the team. It's it's a pity because I know him really well. I, I still speak with him sometimes. And like, he, he really has the potential, everything. Joel, thanks very much for joining me on Football Aranya. How are you, first of all? Yes, I, I yes, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, I feel great. How are you? No, oh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm glad to get to speak to you. Um, I've, I've followed you for a number of years. You know, um, you're 22 years old though now, and you've, you've 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 gone to Swansea City. You started your career in the Netherlands with NEC Nijmegen, Feyenoord, PSV. Could you tell us about your early days in the Netherlands before you even came to to the UK? Oh yeah, yes. It's uh, yeah. It was always great. Uh, playing at NEC was like uh, the first step. It was close, close by home. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Then got to make a nice step to Feyenoord to play like for the uh, for the championship and stuff. And uh, yeah, after my move to PSV was. Uh, a clear goal to reach the first team of PSV. And um, obviously, it didn't, didn't come to that in the end for you. Was that the main reason behind your decision to leave the Netherlands for Swansea? Yes, when I, when I, uh, yeah, I saw the opportunity uh, that Swansea wanted to give me, mm. I thought it was a uh, yeah, really good chance to make a nice move and also uh, play a lot for yeah, a big club in the championship. So I guess my question here is, why did you go to Swansea in England and not, for example, uh, another step in the Eredivisie to a club? Because you played for Sparta on loan the, the year before you, you, were, um, you were at PSV, you didn't break through and then you went to Swansea. Why not stay in the Netherlands? Why, why move abroad? Well, when I, when I just looked at the, yeah, like, the feeling the club gave me and the opportunity to play for another club in the Eredivisie. I I really felt good with my <clears throat> with my decision, and yeah, it's just like a, it's it's a real chance for me when I think about it for myself uh, to make big steps after. Like I had the feeling that if I would make a a step in the Eredivisie. I would have to make maybe two or three steps before mm. I can reach it again. Mm -hmm. So what is your ultimate goal then? You touched upon <clears throat> Swansea perhaps not being your final destination. As a footballer, you always want to get as far as you can. Uh, but did you see this perhaps as a move to get to the Premier League, for example, by, by going to the Championship first? Yes, yes. It's, it's a, yeah, a good way to grow into the Premier League. Mm. But... If you look at the data as well, a lot of other big uh, competitions are above the championship. So, uh, yeah, I just think it's a really good uh, opportunity to, yeah, like grow and really develop. And you're right, because you have had such a great start with Swansea. The club themselves, you know, it hasn't been the best start, but you yourself, you've managed to score some goals. And... Compared to a lot of other Dutch strikers who, who try their luck in, in England or just players that come from the Dutch area of Eze, for example, there's always been a little bit of reputation that they, they you know, they can't, they can't cut it in England. They, they, they can't do it because of this, that and the other. What do you put your success down to so far um, in the UK? When you look at Swansea, our start wasn't the best, but we still try to stay the same and like really play football, not the usual kick and rush, what you uh, most of the time expect from uh, English clubs. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big contribution as well to the success I had like the last couple of months. A question that I love to ask Dutch players who, who come to play in England is, go on, tell us the difference between the Eredivisie and the Championship. Is one better than the other? And what, what differences have you noticed? Well, I have noticed that 
maybe the quality is yeah maybe like the play style it, it's really different um in holland we love to just play do it all fair and uh, nice and over here it's just more it's more fighting much more running uh it's it's yeah a big difference like uh, less possession games but more hard work like, i think that's the biggest difference and, and would you say that if you put swansea in the area of Vizier, where whereabouts do you think they'll be looking to, to be trying to compete i think we will be trying to compete in the uh sub top for sure wow so the quality you can see in England is obviously a lot higher when you look at all the clubs involved. Um, Swansea, of course, playing in Wales. Let's not forget that. But the level in the, you know, the English leagues, very strong indeed. What, what, what I'm looking at then is you've scored roughly a goal every two games so far as your ratio um, in the championship. Why do you think you've adapted so quickly to the English style of play? considering before you couldn't you couldn't score as many goals in the area of Izzy. Why has the championship been like a breakthrough for you? Yeah, I I actually think it's because I also get the opportunity to play a lot. So mm. it makes it easier. It's harder if you just play like 15 or 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, I also have to say that how the gaffer uh, explains about the system we want to play, they call it here uh eastern european style so <laughs> they are oh, oh, do i have to say western but anyway the other side of the sea that's how they say it like they don't really want to play like how yeah real english teams want to play <laughs> very nicely put I, I want to know more about your manager then at swansea russell martin he's he's put a lot of faith into you can you tell us about the relationship you've got with him and, and how has he got the best out of you? Yeah, I have a very good relationship with the gaffer. Um, mm -hmm. He's a really honest uh, person. So it's, yeah, really nice. You know what you have with him. And uh, yeah, he will say straight how he thinks about you or what he thinks is the best for the team. And I have the feeling that he really gives the team confidence. So that's... I think, why we can play the way we play. Mm. And, and the Swansea supporters have really taken to you too, really well um, since you've arrived. Uh, they're, they're, what, what do you think of their, their song? Um, can you sing it to us? <laughs> yeah, no, well, I do really love the song and the fans are amazing, but I think it's a, a, a bit awkward to sing the song. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, the no, 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 pedo, no party is, is 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 how it goes. And what have you made of that? The, the, how quickly they can make a song about you? Yeah, well, uh, when I made the transfer, I first saw it like Swansea posted uh, themselves like no pure no party. So after they started singing it in the stands and during games, it, yeah, it felt it feels amazing. It feels yeah. amazing. Tell us about your life in the UK. You've you've come from the Netherlands, and I don't. Have you ever lived abroad before, or is this your your first time? No, this is my first time living abroad. Yes. What are the biggest differences then you found? Um, I can't ask my mom to make everything for me. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> no, but uh, yeah, it's I have to do everything myself right now. So need to do the from groceries to washing my clothes, uh, everything. Uh, I, I always lived at home, like with my parents when I was in the Netherlands. So it's a yeah, a double step. You're not I'm not only on myself right now, but also abroad, as you said. Have you got used to all the hills yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> I have, yes. <laughs> um you, there was a lot of hype around you when, when you were a teenager. That that that's why at football down you we, we followed you a lot because we watched you come through the youth ranks. I think you scored like um, eight goals in, in 13 games for the under-19s, for example, for the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. were, were you aware of, of, of all of this hype surrounding you at the time? I mean, I, I remember countless times people come to me about, oh, Joel, Joel Pudo, you've got to get him a football manager because he's, he's got all this great potential. 
did you feel pressure with with all of this coming at you at once because i know what the media can be like if if there's a talent they have to get on their backs and watch them really really closely um no i wouldn't say pressure but mm. sometimes it it yeah how do i say it it gives you like the feeling that it has to go quicker mm. that you want to play for a first team quicker and have to be there already well you're not actually really ready so i think that's the the worst part about it but mm. on the other hand it's always nice to be known as that and there'll be many players that have played for the netherlands youth teams that haven't even made it as professional so doing what you're doing now is awesome you've made that breakthrough um and the only way is up the, I want to talk about some of the coaches that have got you there so far to where you are. At PSV, you had the likes of Philip Koku, Mark van Bommel, um, Roger Schmidt. Uh, could you tell me what, you, what you've learned from, from all of them? Because they're, they're, they're known to be such big, big coaches, big names. Yeah, yeah, they're really big names, big coaches. Um, yeah, I have to say it's actually a bit funny because all the three of them, they really think different. Like with uh, Philip Cocu, it was loads of crossing, be ready in the box, have a good positioning, quick transitions. While if you look at Mark van Bommel, he was all about uh, possession, having possession, put work in the legs of uh, the opponent and kill the game as quick as you can, but also keep patient like for the whole game because I think that season, PSV was the team who scored the most goals in the last 15 minutes. And they had like 10 uh, goals scored uh, after the 90th minute. Hmm. And yeah, with uh, Roger Smith, it was loads about the giga pressing, how he would say it, like your reaction after you lose the ball. So as you can see there, like three very different aspects where they put their yeah their own touch on so yeah it was really good to have been there with all the three because as a player it only makes you more overall better mm. you t you're too right that experience of different coaches where they've been and all the different tactics um will help you a lot and you've got that again with swansea now with with smith again different how are they how are they as people as well you, they, are they as different with their personalities as they were with their with their tactical tactical formations well yes they they were very different as people like um with the one with one gaffer you can have uh, a small chat the other one is more focused on games only and uh only speaks with uh yeah, the big players who always start. So that's that's all also a difference like when you get to play or when you're just a sub. So yeah, that's hard to tell, but at the end they're always nice and yeah, they take real care for the players. I guess a quite a tricky question for you, having just, just left PSVs. Do do you see Smith um succeeding with, with PSV? He, he's he had a, a tricky season last season, um, and this season he's changed things. That Super Cup win over Ajax, that 4 0 win, was a big statement. Um, but he makes a lot of substitutions. So, do you see that working overall in the end? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's difficult to say because at first, when he came, we started playing uh, like the 4 2 2 2, was the system he always plays at his club. And at PSV at the time, we never played it or anything a little bit similar to it. So I think it was a big adjustment. So, But we can always fall back to 4-3-3 uh, three, three with uh, uh, a real number 10. So I think change, when he changes it, it's, yeah, maybe tactical. Or also it brings the players... It, uh, again in uh, familiar situations so I, I don't think it's a bad choice mm -hmm. switching back to the 4-3-3 what Dutch players are always um, 
have been trained and have known most of their, their footballing careers. The same was happening with the Netherlands, wasn't it? Louis van Gaal coming in, a lot of talk about going back to 4-3-3. Uh, speaking of van Gaal, you, you've also been coached by Henk Fraser, who's now one of van Gaal's assistants with the Netherlands. Can you tell us about him? Why do you think van Gaal liked him so much to be one of his assistants? Well, I, I think it's because he's a real down-to-earth person who's really straightforward, doesn't keep any secrets for people. And, uh, yeah, he he also played at a high level and knows a lot about it. So I think he just, uh, yeah, assists him because of his experience as well. Mm. Could you tell us about some of the best players you played with whilst you were at PSV over the years? Over the years? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, when I played together with uh, Mario Götze, obviously. Doya Mala. <clears throat> um, I would say Pablo Rosario. Um, the Lozano. Um, Guardado as well. Wow. Really good. Santiago Arias. Uh, Yetro Williams and of course also Luc Dion mm. yeah I think yeah and of course Mark Fajinko <laughs> yes all, all the experienced guys and a lot of the South Americans that, that came across there I know what you're saying yes yes <laughs> and um, you've got there as well now Noni Madueke a lot of interest com- comes from us because he's obviously an English person going over there into the Netherlands and, and developing, developing his career. H- how is he um, to train with? And, and, and do you, did you know him well whilst you were at PSV? Yes, yes. I know him very well. Um, yeah, I really like him. Uh, he made a, such, such a nice development as well. When I look at him when he first came, <coughs> sorry. I think it was in the under 17s or under 19s. And when I look at him now, he made really big steps and I'm really happy for him that he's doing so well right now. Mm -hmm. And one that will be more difficult to talk about, I do appreciate, is Mohamed Ihatardan, who also had this almost potential coming through a PSV. Um, Do you you still speak with him? And I guess there's been a lot of um, speculation about him, shall we say. With 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 Schmidt and how the way he left PSV, what what's your overall feeling with the situation now with with Ihatardan? Yeah, well, if I have to say, I would just say it's it's a pity because I know him really well. I I still speak with, with him sometimes, and like he he really has the potential, everything, but I think he just needs support and trust from the club, from the trainer as well, and. That's just, I think, the main reason for him that he, yeah, he, he didn't feel it at the club. So, yeah, it was a bit strange because the year before with Mark van Bommel, he did really great and everyone was thinking about his next step and everything. So I would say it's just a pity, really. It is, yeah. And, and it, it's, it's, it's difficult when you, you always see these young Dutch talents coming through. There's, there's always so much potential, so many big names that you can go, oh, I can't wait to see what they do when they, when they get there. And um, you need to take your chance as well, don't you, when, when it comes. So just that one you've taken to go to Swansea and, and, and you can see how, just how well it's gone. Um, yeah, best luck to how hard, I suppose, going abroad and, and trying something new as well. Uh, in all, in all this time then you've been playing, um, in, the, in the years you've had as a professional so far, could you say who the best defenders are that you've come up against? Have there been any centre-backs in the Netherlands or, or the UK where, where you've, you've remembered the game afterwards? The best centre-defenders? Um, well, I have to say, does the... No, um, <laughs> it's, it's a tough one, actually. Because, yeah, most of the games I played weren't that long, so I don't really remember the defenders. <laughs> and over here, I don't really know their names. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the game when I 
get got subbed in again with Sparta against Ajax when I scored my first goal in the Eredivisie. Um, yeah, defenders of Ajax, they're mm. I think the best in the league in the Eredivisie as well. If you look at the other teams, mm. so I would have to say them. Mm-hmm. Just the back four. Yeah, that they look superior again in in the ODVC. It's looking scary about mm-hmm. the kind of things they they can do, they can achieve. Uh, you said there about about not knowing the names of the defenders in in the championship. <laughs> how how does that work tactically then? Because you're obviously given you know bits of advice what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Um, so did they ever drop the names of the defenders in uh, as to what you what you should do to get around them? Well, most of the time we we only talk about their height because there are plenty of defenders that are like. Six five, six four, and then we just talk about is he left or right, but we don't really talk about uh, their names <laughs> <coughs> or their careers where they have played or something. So yeah. I just focus on that part. <laughs> Scoring goals, that's your job yeah. at the end of the day. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the last question then, and Joe, is that what 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 are your next steps to improve your game um, at at twenty two? In, at Swansea now, you've obviously learned quite a lot in your time in the UK already. Where do you go next? Yeah, I I think I have, I have to develop like getting a proper season where I have to score around 15 to 20 goals minimum and just keep up that level and get more adjusted to playing every week, um, play against big, strong defenders, as well as smaller and quicker defenders. <coughs> Sorry. And just yeah, get my own patterns so I can just stay as well and not just come as a newbie, play good for a couple of games and then drop off again. <laughs> so is there anyone that's helped you settle into Swansea to make it easy for you, this transition? Yes, yes. Um, my dad came over first wow. the first couple of weeks to help me sort everything out, but the club has helped me really good as well. Mm. Any players that you met that have been really helpful too? Uh, yes, yes. Um, at the start, uh, Corey Smith, Jamal Le, they really helped me as well. And I uh, had some nice chats with them as well. And uh, yeah, Matt Grimes, the skip, he also helped me a lot uh, during my first weeks at Swansea. Mm. There's a lot of positivity in terms of your your time so far at Swansea. Um, where where do you think the club's going going this season? Do you think that they're they they'll be you know staving away from from any sort of danger um, and relegation, or do you think that there there's there is still potential to go for promotion and look at the playoffs towards the end of the season? Yeah, we we didn't hit a long uh, preseason with the with the new uh, Gaffer, so. We had some difficulties during the first weeks, but I think we're on the right track now. And when the last part will fall as well, I I think we will get to the yeah the top of the table real quick. Like the gap isn't that big as well, so we just have to go for a nice uh, streak. Hmm. Well, Joe, thanks very much for joining me on Football with Anya. Um, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure to to get to know you better and. Um... They are all the best to you in, in the UK play, playing in the championship and, and who knows what will happen next. Yes, thank you very much and uh, we will chat another time hopefully. Absolutely. All right, I'll speak to you soon.